Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Hartford Whalers expansion franchise here on NHL 24. In the last episode, we watched our team fall to Edmonton Oilers 3-2. However, we did rebound with two nice victories, 5-2 against Vancouver, and then 5-3 against Colorado. We sit here at 12-7-4 as we're starting the month of December, and I don't really have much structure for this episode. We're not going to watch a full game, and I think we're just going to sim heavy here and just work our way through December, which will be 14 games, and then I think we'll pick it up next episode, January 1st, 2025, against the Los Angeles Kings. So we'll get right to it here. We have a back-to-back -back hosting St. Louis, and then at Philly, and St. Louis, one of the worst teams here, coming in at 7, 13, and 3. And we go up 1-0, Sammy Mocking, that's another one. I think he scored in our last game, so his first two goals now... Coming back-to-back -back games. Two more there in the second. One from Shifley and one from Cody Cece. And we stand strong there. We only allow 16 shots on goal compared to 36. So we're getting a ton of shots off in these games. As you see, Manji Apani, the first star, two assists, three hits. And Markstrom with a 16-save shutout is the second star. Sammy Maki, the third star. And we'd love to see his, his goal scoring get going. I mean... Didn't really have much expectation for that coming into this season, but if he could score even like five goals on the year, I'd kind of be satisfied with that. Now we'll keep Markstrom in for this road divisional game against Philly. 1-1 there, Morgan Frost and CeCe scores in back-to-back -back games. And you'll notice Luckinen, our boy who we talked about now in a few episodes, is in goal here for the Flyers. We give up two there, Couturier nets one. And we'll send this third period. We only get one, so we do fall 3-2 to two here to, against the Flyers. Shifley scores in back-to-back -back games as well. Ruidel, first star, one goal, one assist. New acquisition there for Philly. I think they probably signed him over the offseason. So in the last episode, we saw we played the defending Stanley Cup champs. Now we're about to play the defending Eastern Conference champs, Boston Bruins, who have gotten off to an awful start here at 10-12-4. So we'll send this one. Colorado, another team who has had a very disappointing season. Harford jumps up 2-1. to one. We finally, we've only had three power play goals so far in the season. Maji Apani gets our fourth there. We do give up a power play goal to Pavel Zaka, but Jake Evans puts us ahead late in the period, 2-1. to one. And we get two more there, both from Philip Zadina, as we head into the third period up 4-1 to one against Boston. And we hang strong there. Charlie Coyle gets one for the Bruins, but JT Confer... That's an empty netter, and ball, or, uh, Hartford wins here, 5-2. to two. Three points there from Zadina, and I've really been considering playing him on the second line. His production, offensive production, has been great this year, and then when we watch him in live games, he's very active defensively, so he's someone who has really resurrected his career here in Hartford, and that's something we've, uh, we've, uh, we, that's something like during the expansion draft we kept talking about, these uh, players getting second chances here, Nolan Patrick. Another one, we'll check out his stats. Five assists in 15 games, so nothing crazy there from Patrick playing on the fourth line. And I just wanted to make sure Markstrom is still in for this one. So now we host the Vegas Golden Knights, a team Edmonton um, beat last year in the playoffs on their way to the Stanley Cup championship. And we get three there in the first, Jake Evans, Victor Arvidsson, and Shifley. We get two more there. We go up 5 nothing. But then we give up a late one to William Carlson. And Nolan Patrick scores his first goal of the season against his former club. And then we get one more there from Patrick Kane in the third. And we beat Vegas 6-3. to three. Sebastian Ajo, the first star with three assists. And once uh, Dmitry Orlov came back from injury last episode, I actually scratched Logan Stanley. So Sebastian Ajo has been in there just to give us a little more offensive production out of our back end, and certainly it's been working so far. So now we have a couple road games here against fellow Eastern Conference opponents. Here against Tampa Bay, who's playing decent so far, although they have a seven overtime losses. And we get four there in the first period. Unreal. Two from Patty Kane, one on the power play. Philip Zadina continues his hot streak, and Jake Evans nets one there on the fourth line as well as a uh, Vasilevsky just gives up a ton of goals there in just the first 12 minutes or so. 
And then they do get on the board there. Kucherov scores on Wedgwood. And then we get one more there from Nolan Patrick, who I think now has scored in two straight games or two out of three. And I guess uh, Scott Wedgwood was thrown in there. I thought I had Markstrom still in, but... Oh, I guess so. Markstrom got hurt, and my he's going to be out till February 12th. So Markstrom's about to miss two months. So that's just brutal. Obviously, we traded for Markstrom in the offseason. So now we're going to have to call Daniil Tarasov back up. And he's been doing pretty well here in the AHL. I mean, he did well last year as well, but 16-11-1, five shutouts, 9-2-8 save percentage, and a 1-9-3 goals against. So Daniil Tarasov is now going to be our backup goaltender for the next couple months. And Scott Wedgwood, he's going to be relied on here to keep this this uh, very good play of the Whalers in, on track. So, wow, I didn't see that one coming. Let's just take a look at Wedgwood's numbers so far. Not too great. I mean, that 3-2-6 goals against, obviously not good. I mean, the 901 save percentage, not bad from a backup. But I mean, 6-2-1, and one, so he's getting the job done when he's in there. Very good win rate. So Scott Wedgwood, we brought him back to be our backup goaltender. He was definitely the most stable between Tarasov, Matt Murray last year. So he earned a roster spot back. And now he's going to get get a chance to really propel his career status. So now we have a road game against Montreal. They come in at 13-11-4. And, and Wedgwood's first start here since uh, the Markstrom injury. So we go up one nothing. Another Jake Evans goal. He's been hot scoring here against his former team as Montreal only gets three shots off in the first period. We stay up one nothing after the second. It does become a one one game from Dvorak, and he scores on Tarasov. So I guess the game threw Tarasov in there. I put auto rotate goalies back on, so it's kind of unpredictable. I thought I had Wedgwood in there, and Nolan Patrick gets another one. His third here in the last three or four games or so. And Patrick Kane. Gets one as well. Nolan Patrick, two points, the first star. Jake Evans, second star against his former team. So we're hot here and to start this episode. This is what I like to see. Just want to take a little recap. So we're one and one, two and one, three and one, four and one, five and one so far to start this episode. And we're not giving up really that many goals. We're only giving up. About a goal or two each game so far. So our defense really stepping up. And let's, let's just check out our defensive stats real quick. And that was kind of a unit that turned out to be a weak spot for us to start the year. And it looks like now they're playing very well. I mean, I have Orlov and Barry there on that top line. And not too great. Minus five and a minus nine. Sebastian Ajo, though. Five points in 16 games. And a plus minus of 11. And Cody Cece at plus 21. I think he already has more goals with six than he had last year. And look at this back line with Sammy Maki and Sean Walker. Walker at a plus 14. Maki with seven points and a plus 11. So very good player from our first overall pick so far. I've kind of been moving him around between the first pairing, second, and third. But it looks like he's doing best so far on that third pairing along with Sean Walker. And here's a little look at our lineup. Marcus Foligno, I just noticed... Went up to an 83 overall. He has 15 points in 29 games. Very good showing so far from Marcus Foligno. And this fourth line in general, I mean, Foligno a plus 7. Evans a plus 14. And Patrick, he's uh, gone up a lot. As we saw to start this episode, he had, what, 5 points in like 15 games? And now he has 3 goals and 2 assists in the next 3. So Nolan Patrick getting hot. And this fourth line playing very, very well for us. I really love the mix and balance down there. Zadina, he has 21 points in 29 games, playing very good hockey. Plus 11 in Confer, plus 15. Arvid's in there with a minus three. He's been up and down the lines. And this is what we started with to start the season with Tom Wilson, Scott Lawton, and Leo Carlson. And Carlson just really not getting it done for us. Is you're only nine points and a minus 14. Tom Wilson's been kind of underwhelming with 15 points, but he's been hot and cold, so... And he brings a very good physical presence. Patrick Kane, 11 goals in 24 games. And then Mark Scheifele leads the way with 35 points in 29 games. Manji Apani, respectable production there on the top line. There we go, Wedgwood and Daniel Tarasov. Tarasov entered, I, I guess. He only had nine saves in the last game, so he must have entered 
or Scott Wedgwood, who maybe got hurt. I don't really know what happened there. But that was just a little recap. Now about 30 games into the season. And we'll keep moving along here as we move uh, through the month of December. Now we'll sim this Washington game. And if I recall correctly, this is Tom Wilson's first game against his former squad. And Capitals come in playing very good hockey as well at 7-2-1 and in their last 10. They do take a 2-0 lead. Gany Svechnikov, a power play goal, and TJ Oshie. So look at that. Yeah, Wedgwood was in the game, and then he goes out for Tarasov. They're just like four minutes in, so maybe Wedgwood got hurt. Hopefully that's not the case. Shifley gets one, and Svechnikov gets another. So Washington up 3-1, to one, and we'll just let this last period play out. See if we can amount a two-goal comeback. If we get one, we'll jump in. Now we're on a power play. Nothing there. And they get another one. So Strom, Dylan Strom scores on Tarasov. And then Tom Wilson gets one there against his former team. Four minutes now left. And it looks like that's all going to do it here. So we do fall here 4-2 to two against a divisional opponent in the Washington Capitals. And hopefully Scott Wedgwood did not get hurt. And we didn't get an injury notification. So that's like two games now where Tarasov was thrown in there. I don't really know what, what's up with that. So go back to the lines and check out the goalie situation. Yeah, Wedgwood's still there to start. And Tarasov actually just went up to an 81 overall. So now at we have a three-game road trip here at Carolina, at Winnipeg, at Arizona. We go up one nothing there. Goal from Felino on Kachikov. Wow, look at all this scoring here. So what is that, seven goals here in the second period? Van Reems is like now a hurricane. And look, yeah, Tarasov is in the net. So what's going on? I'm pretty sure it just showed Wedgwood as our starter. So Van Reems like makes it 1-1. Then three straight here. Wow, so look at this, 438. So in the last four minutes, 38 seconds, there were five goals scored. So anyway, Arvidsson gets one. Kane gets one. Felino gets one. So we take a 4-1 lead at that point. And then Svechnikov scores, making it 4-2. Kane scores about a minute, 20 seconds later, and then Van Riemsdyk scores. So look at that. Patrick Kane and then Van Riemsdyk, the one and two pick. And what draft was that? Was that like the 20, 2008 NHL draft or 2000? I don't know. Something like that. 2008, 2009 NHL draft. So 5-3 were up after two. And then no scoring there in the third. So we hang on to win. Seven goals there in the second, zero in the third. What a game that must have been. Felino first star, two goals, and Kane, second star. And there you go, Van Reems, like the, the Jersey-born kid, representing over here, Ocean County, Monmouth County. All right, now we're set to play Mark Shifley's former team, as we did open the season against them with a win, if I recall correctly. Or did we lose that game? I'm going to just recap real quick, go back to our first game. And we won that game, 6-4. Yep, okay. So now we set at 18-9-4, and, and we're currently fourth in the Metro. Pretty good standing so far. And just, like, let's just, again, look at this goalie situation because I turned auto-rotate goalies back on, but it's just doing crazy stuff now. So Wedgwood's still there as a starter. I guess it just doesn't update if it switches them. It just does it in-game. I don't know. Rambling. Let's get back to hockey. All right, let's send this first period. We go up 2-1. to one. Patty Kane and Leo Carlson finally gets on the board. It's been a while since he scored. So 2-1 to one after 1. And then look at that. Another implosion there in goals. Five goals there in the second period. Hanola, Pionk, both defensemen for Winnipeg. So what, they went up, they tied it through, oh, they went up 3-2. Yeah, so they went up 3-2. And then Patrick made it 3-3. And then Orlov and Arvidsson gets one as well. So 5-3 going into the third. And uh, all the, the, those last three goals came all in the last six and a half minutes of the period. And then we'll send the third. Nate Schmidt gets one, but we hang on there to beat Winnipeg, who had 44 shots on goal. My goodness. And Arvidsson there, the first star. So not, not a glam, glamorized win there, but a win nonetheless as we continue to roll on here in this episode. Get that trade offer out of here, Montreal. We're not trading Mangiapani. And then the last of this road trip, as we're set to face off with the Arizona Coyotes. 
I'm not even going to check the goalie situation. Just let them do whatever they want for now. Definitely will monitor it more, though, if when uh, once Markstrom returns. No scoring there after the first. And then five goals there in the second period is just the money period, I guess. As we fall down 3-2, Scott Lawton and Leo Carlson gets another one. Patrice Bergeron scores now with the Coyotes after spending last year in Anaheim. We will let this third period play out. See if we can net a tie, a game tying goal here. Now halfway through the third period. A power play for Hartford. Nothing doing. Less than five minutes down the game. Come on, let's get one. We can't lose to the Coyotes. And we do fall to Arizona, unfortunately, on the road. You got to remember, we do have our backup goaltender in there. And we've had a very, very good run thus far. And I will pick it up here on Christmas Day against the Columbus Blue Jackets. And remember, they killed us last year. If you recall, a Patrick Line episode where he beat us for a hat trick. And we just got absolutely obliterated in that game. I think we lost that game 8-2. to two. If you haven't checked out that episode, go back. I forget when exactly it is, but you'll see Patrick Line there on the thumbnail. So we're already 10 games into this episode and we're sporting a clean 7-3 and record. Now a tough task here against Columbus, who can just have an outburst of goals. We do go up 1-0 with a JT Confer goal. Now it's 2-2. Scott Lawton made it 2-0. And then, of course, Patrick Laine. That's probably his like 10th goal against us in this series. And then uh, Chinikov ties it up late. So we actually are going to jump into this one. Uh, we haven't jumped into any games yet so far. And this Columbus team, it's a little bit different from last year. They now have Donovan Dublowitz, who you'll see out there. He was the second overall pick last year. And um, he's already an 84 overall, I think, in his rookie season. So just another offensive stud here for this Columbus team. Mangiapane will take it the other way for Hartford. This tie game here in the third period. Mangiapane works his way and paddled away there by Merz Lincolns. Now Shifley loses possession. Zach Wierinski takes it. Picked up by Patrick Line. He'll take it the other way into the neutral zone. Dumps it in for Columbus. Tyson Berry now around the net for Hartford. He gives it to Mark Shifley. Shifley peels back. Finds some space. Gives off the ball to Mangiapane. Fighting for it against the boards. Mangiapane still with it. Feeds it up the, up the boards to Orlov. His centering pass picked off by Wierinski. Now Johnny Gaudreau going the other way. Johnny Gaudreau works his way in. Lethal shot. And then Zorinsky blocks shot in front by Tyson Barry. They're in the high slot. Leo Carlson fends off Boone Jenner and will take it the other way for Hartford. Gives to Tom Wilson, who enters the zone. Tom Wilson peels back. A crossover for Tyson Barry. Chance in front, snagged by Merz Lincoln's glove save. And good, uh, good drive there. Good sequence from Hartford to take it the other way and create an opportunity. Good showing there by Leo Carlson. Now an offensive zone draw here for Lawton leading the second line against Boone Jenner. That's back to Urasek. He takes it up for Columbus. Pass there to Barbanov. Free agent signing there for the Blue Jackets. Now Boone Jenner, his feed pass blocked away. Now Chinakonov with it. Bockfist. Urasek a shot. Blocker save Wedgwood into the corner. Barbanov, his pass to the point for Urasek. Leo Carlson trying to take it back. Now Yersek regains possession. His shot, glove saved by Scott Wedgwood, who plays it out to Aho. Aho feeds Scott Lawton, taking it the other way for Hartford. Leo Carlson picks up a loose puck, takes it into the zone. Carlson's still with it. In front for Aho. Now JT Confer slap shot blocked in traffic. I think that was Tom Wilson who took the grunt of that. Aho now to Cody Cece. Cece works his way in, deflected away. Yersek picks it up for Columbus. He feeds up the boards. Overtaken there by Aho. And that's Tom Wilson feed pass for Comfort. Glove Sabres Lincolns. Another offensive zone draw here. Now JT Comfort out there with Zadina and Arvidsson. Draw back, one back. Rozovic picks up a loose puck. He takes it in for the Blue Jackets. Feed over to Winsky. Now Texier gets on the stick of Maki. Overtaken there by Rozovic. Marchenko back to Luke Shen. Now Winsky a shot from the slot. Blocked away, and Texier gets a shot off. It goes wide, picked up by Scott Wedgwood. And that'll bring up another face-off here. Now defensive zone draw for Hartford. JT Confer against Rosovic. Advantage Confer, one back to Sean Walker. 
He goes over to Sammy Maki. Maki up to Confer. Now over to Victor Arvidsson. Arvidsson takes it in. Loses possession. Picked up by Zach Wierenski. Very good defenseman there for Columbus. Being chased by Confer. He'll dump it in. Retrieved there by Sean Walker. Takes it behind the net. Feeds up to Victor Arvidsson. Arvidsson goes over to JT Confer. Confer will take it in for Hartford. Has some spaces passed there. Felino glove sabers Lincolns. And that just funneled through to, onto the stick of Felino, who got a nice rip off. But Mers Lincolns was there to close the door. And Felino has been very productive as we have that fourth line back out there. All of whom have very good chemistry so far on this season. Evans wins it back to Walker. His shot off the faceoff glove sabers Lincolns. Now about halfway through this third period, still a tie game. Goudreau will give up to Lion A. Poked away there in the neutral zone. Tyson Berry gives chase. He gets a pass over to Orlov. Orlov over to Nolan Patrick. Overtaken there by Ken Johnson. A shot. And luckily, good recovery defense there by Orlov. Horrible turnover there as Warinski gets a shot off. And that's going to go off a man out of play. That fourth line still out there for Hartford. Tie up there at faceoff. Trickles back to Warinsky. He gives to Luke Shen. Now Ken Johnson in front. Can't really get a shot off. Goudreau picks it up. His pass overtaken. Now Nolan Patrick will take it. He'll give there to Jake Evans who dumps it in. Picked up by Zach Warinsky to Luke Shen. Shen's had a very good stay here in Columbus. Orlov overtakes him there. He'll take it the other way. Gives to Nolan Patrick. Nolan Patrick takes it in. They have a man advantage there. Felino. And he can't really get a shot off the pad. And then Evans a chance in front. Close off on Murs Lincolns. Felino in the slot for Barry. His shot deflected. That's picked up by Patrick Lyon A. And he's the last man we want taking a shot here. Nice feed there for your sec. Back to Goudreau. Close off by Tyson Barry. Lyon A a shot right in front. Glove save Scott Wedgwood. Like I just said, that's the last man we want getting a shot off here. Especially on that spot of the ice. Now we'll see this fourth line for Columbus featuring... The rookie, number two overall pick from last year, Donovan Dublowitz. They're at left wing for Columbus, number 75. Patrick Kane will take it the other way, overtaken there by David Yursek, who gets the turnover. Peels around. Picked off there by Shifley, who gives to Mangiapane as he takes it in for Hartford. Mangiapane, pass behind the net for Patrick Kane. He can't take control of it. Now Severson picks it up for the Blue Jackets. He gives to Curley there. Now back to Bemstrom. His shot glove saves Scott Wedgwood. And a nice chance in the slot there from Bemstrom. And Wedgwood was there to glove it and close the door. This top line still out there for Hartford. We'd like to see them get something going. As Ajo picks it up off the draw. Gives to Patrick Kane. Kane dumps it as he was closed off there. Picked up by Yersek. His pass intercepted there by Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane in front pad save. Merz Lincolns. Picked up along the boards by Ajo. Now Patrick Kane. Back to Carlson now. Ajo will take it in. He loses possession to Dublowitz. And Dublowitz gets it out of harm's way to Severson. Now to Bemstrom in the neutral zone. Skates away from man. Gives to Curley. Curley his pass there. Deflected by Ajo. Still fighting for it in the corner. Curley gets it back. His pass not cleanly received. And it deflects to Tom Wilson on a breakaway. Tom Wilson on a break. And he doesn't really get a good chance off there. Ms. Lincolns plays it well. Loose puck still. And now Columbus will take it. Now Scott Lawton takes it at the blue at the point. Back with it in the slot. His shot savers Lincolns. Barbanoff with it against the boards. Held up by Tom Wilson. Loose puck to Tom Wilson. And he's overtaken there by Luke Shen, who gives to Kiralee. Gina Koff for Columbus. Poked away by Cody Cece into the corner. Still with it. He gives there to Boone Jenner in front. He can't receive it cleanly. Poked away. Now Gina Koff back with it behind the net for Jenner. Boone Jenner back to Barbanov. Wierinski to Chinikov. Back to Wierinski at the point. His shot blocked. Nice block there from Philip Zadina. And Zadina has been tremendous this year. Arvidsson there to give chase in front of the net. Hook it to Zadina. Shot pad save. Rebound over in the boards. Arvidsson will give there to Barry. Barry now to con for his shot. Easy save there by Merz Lincolns. And a great opportunity there created by the defensive play of Philip Zadina. Tom Wilson now records his 75th hit of the season. And he had a nice chance on that breakaway. He hasn't really had a moment here yet in Hartford. 
And that certainly would have been one as Barry gets a shot off deflected away into the corner. Your sec, loose puck for Arvidsson in front. A quick chance, pad save. Confer in front to Zadina. Rebound in front. Loose puck, Confer. And it looks like Harvard can't get a shot off as they had a couple chances there as time was expiring. But luck, or luckily for Columbus, there's going to be post-regulation play here. As hopefully we can finally pull out an overtime victory here on the season. All right, we're set to start this overtime as Hartford has Shifley, Patrick Kane, and Dmitry Orlov out there for this three-man three line. Back to Orlov. Gives to Shifley, and they'll have a chance here. Shifley, oh, and he tried to get Patrick Kane there, but he couldn't get the pass. Now up the boards, picked up by Kane. Gives to Shifley, goes over to the corner. Shifley now held up against the boards. He kicks her out behind the net, picked up by Johnny Gaudreau, who gives up to Bockvist. Now Kent Johnson takes the loose puck the other way. Columbus has numbers. Kent Johnson a shot. Rebound. And he just goes on the side of the net. He had the open net. But his shot goes to the side of the net. He didn't have the angles. And then Dimitri Orloff will take it the other way for Hartford. There's Patrick Kane. His chance. Save Mers Lincolns. And Patty Kane could have put the game away. As well as Kent Johnson on the other side. He had an even better chance. Still these top... Three-man pairings out there for each team. Shifley and Kent Johnson on the draw. And Johnson wins that back to Bockfist. He gets it to Gaudreau as Columbus takes it the other way. Pass there for Johnson. He closes it on net. And just off the post. What a nice move in front. But his shot goes off the post. And Wedgwood will save it. And also, what was Dmitry Orlov doing there? I don't know if anyone caught that. Maybe rewind it a couple seconds. But he just totally skated away. From everybody into the corner. Just totally let Johnson skate in there. As now we have Tom Wilson, Scott Lawton out there. And Dimitri Orloff is still out there. Why? I thought Tyson Berry was supposed to be out there here with uh, Lawton and Wilson. As a nice chance there for Jenner he, uh, on uh, Wedgwood who saves it. Yeah, I don't know why they're not putting Tyson Berry out there. With Wilson and Lawton. I thought the three-man lines were all the same. But I guess the defensive, the defenseman is still different. That just goes separately, unfortunately. As Tom Wilson will take it the other way. And he just loses it there to Zach Wierenski. Now Boone Jenner gets Patrick Lyon and who else with the game on his stick. Patrick Lyon, backhand rebound. He scores on his own rebound. My goodness. Our three-man lines just do not know how to play hockey. We cannot win in overtime. Painful just to watch that. And Orlov, what were you doing? So not a bad result. We still get a point from a very, very good opponent. I mean, here in year two, Columbus is a lot better of a team than they are in present day. As you see, Patrick Lyon just continues to destroy us. I said it earlier, and I think that literally might be his 10th goal in like five games against us. Like I'm going to double check those stats. So an unfortunate result here, although we still get a point as Hartford falls here at home against the Columbus Blue Jackets. 3-2 to two on Christmas Day. Now we have just three more games left in this episode. Two more road games here against Florida, San Jose, and then a home game against division rival, the New York Rangers, who are currently atop the division. So we'll jump into this one at Florida, and I believe Daniil Tarasov will be in net for this one. And we go up 1-0 with a Nolan Patrick goal. He continues to be fairly productive for us on that bottom line. Now, Sean Walker made it 2 nothing, and then Barkov gets one with one second left, and that goal is going to be crucial here as we'll let this third period play out. And Barkov gets one right there, 41 seconds in, although Shifley gets one right back. So we are up 3-2, to two, but Barkov got one one second left in the second, and then gets one 40 seconds into the third. So we're three, and then Reinhardt ties it up there, and and I wanted to jump into it, but I didn't hit pause quick enough as Matt Kachuk puts them up 4-3. to three. I don't know if we're going to come back from that. So like I said, that one second goal from Barkoff in the second turned out to be the difference as we fall 4-3 to three here. With our third string goalie in against a very good... I mean, they haven't been too great to start the season, but Florida is still a very talented team. Now we'll head to San Jose to play the Sharks. And this San Jose team actually has Anze Kopitar on it. They signed him in the offseason. I just want to make sure Scott Wedgwood is in for this one. 
and I'm probably going to change the lines up despite our success in this episode. I just really got to get Leo Carlson and Tom Wilson going. I was hoping having them on the same line would really be good for this team, but it just has not. So we're going to have to mix things up a little bit. Now we'll jump into this San Jose game. Then we fall 3-1 in the first period at Logan Tur. Walton at least gets a power play goal for us, and then Kopitar and Adam Henrique. This San Jose team just super old, I guess, at this point, based on the players they brought in. No scoring there in the second, and we'll just let this third period play out. As Mark Scheifele makes it 3-2, so we are back in it. And after our great start to the episode, we really got to be beating these teams like San Jose. Now just less than five minutes. Do we have it in us to tie it up late? And it looks like not. So we are going to fall here to San Jose and just a tough loss against a team that we should be beating. And now Marcus Felino is hurt. So that'll bring uh, Connor McMichael back into the lineup. And I was worried. I haven't even checked on Connor McMichael. I, was, I thought his overall might have fallen. But he's stunned 80 overall. He played in the first 16 games for us before we turned uh, to Nolan Patrick. Four points, only a minus one, but he's going to get more run here with the injury to Nolan, uh, to Marcus Felino. And what, 14 points for 25 games. Patrick, so Patrick has definitely been the more productive player. So now our last game here in this episode, we started off tremendously, and now we've dropped three in a row. You don't like that. We really need to rebound here against the Rangers, who are 26-10. and 10. And let's see where they rank in the NHL. They have 52 points. And they're currently the second team in the NHL, only behind the Minnesota Wild, who are currently the top team in the NHL. So just make sure Wedgwood is back in here for this one. As this is the last day, this is also New Year's Eve of 2024. And they did throw Terrace off, so they'll throw Wedgwood in. And Sim this last game. And uh, Sayonara, 20, Sayonara 2024. We're about to be going into 2025 after this one. We fall down 2 0. Panarin and Adam Fox with goals. We give up another one there to Lafreniere. And then we don't score at all here as we're shut out by, I'm assuming, Shesterkin. As, yes, yeah, Shesterkin, a 22 shave shut out against us. So after a tremendous start to the episode, we drop four in a row. And that just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I kind of take these losses personal. It's kind of a. Uh, actually lost five in a row. Jeez. So we won 7 out of 10 and then lost 5 in a row, ending the episode 7 and 8. And just a total collapse there. Now we're 19, 13, and 5. And we were sitting pretty there in the Metro. And we actually still do have a playoff spot. It looks like we're going to be battling with Pittsburgh most of the way. As well as maybe Detroit and Montreal. So we got to step it up a little bit going forward. Now next episode, we're set to take on the Los Angeles Kings were 15, 15, and 7. And they've only won two of their last 10. So hopefully that's a game we can rebound with. And of course, you got to remember we have our backup goaltender right now, along with our third string goaltender. So it hasn't been too pretty for us to close this episode. And that's a big reason why. So this is where I'm going to leave you, folks. I really, like I always say, I'm super grateful if you're sticking around for this Hartford Whalers franchise. I know. Um, the views really aren't there for this series quite yet, but I don't really mind. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be playing franchises like this anyway, you know. So might as well record it, get my thoughts, and hopefully um, get some people to enjoy it along the way. And um, plus minus minus 17 for Leo Carlson, so that's not good. Only 14 points through 37 games, and um, he's not even on, like he's barely. I don't think he's even on pace to a uh, eclipse his last season point total. So. Disappointing sidebar there, but um, like I said, this is where I'm going to leave you folks. I always appreciate it. Leave some comments. Let me know what you think, and as always, it's been real, and be well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.